Hi everyone, my name is Joey Shaw. I'm a PhD candidate at the University of Michigan's School of Information. This presentation is about our longitudinal field study on evaluating two digital employment tools that supported underrepresented job seekers. This is joint work with my advisor, Professor Tuana Dillahunt. So today, many technologies facilitate the needs of relatively affluent populations. These injustices are often transferred to online job search. Job seekers, such as those who have a college degree, higher incomes, and higher digital literacy are more likely to be supported by existing digital employment tools. However, underrepresented job seekers, such as racial and ethnic minorities, people who have limited formal education, or people who have lower digital literacy were left behind when using digital tools for job search. There are few digital employment tools that support these job seekers' needs, and it is unclear how these tools should be designed to better support this population. So we built on prior research which investigated 10 conceptual employment tools that support underrepresented job seekers. We selected two of the top-rated tools that both focused on feedback mechanism in the job search process. These tools were ReviewMe and Interview4. This slide shows the screenshots of ReviewMe and Interview4. Let me quickly introduce the two tools to you. ReviewMe allows job seekers to upload resumes and get feedback from online volunteers. We implemented ReviewMe and utilized Amazon Mechanical Turk as the pool for online reviewers. The second tool, Interview 4, was similar in nature, although it's focused on interviews and gave, feedback, gave seek job seekers the option to get feedback from their own personal networks. While we developed the review me in-house, Interview 4 was an existing tool. Job seekers could practice and record interviews review their interview videos, and share them with their family or friends for feedback. This diagram illustrates the theoretical framework that we used to frame our study. This theory is the theory of planned behavior, the TPB. The TPB captures three cognitive factors, self-efficacy, subjective norms, and attitudes. Self-efficacy refers to the perceived ease of, or difficulty of performing job search behavior. To put it simply, is a job seeker's confidence in job search activities. Second, subjective norms refers to the social pressure and social support to perform job search activities. Lastly, attitudes, it refers to an individual's evaluation of how their job search behavior will lead to corresponding employment outcomes. TPB then models how the three cognitive factors affect job seekers' intention to spend efforts on job search, and then how the intention leads to their actual job search behavior, which was how much efforts job seekers really spend on job search. We chose the TPB as our theoretical framework because of two reasons. First, TPB is widely used to model how job search is affected by various factors, such as job search interventions or job seekers' ethnic and cultural backgrounds. Second, past research suggests that underrepresented job seekers face barriers, such as low self-efficacy or lack of support network. These barriers effects could be framed by the TPB model. Our research goal is to explore design applications for digital employment tools to support underrepresented job seekers' needs. So we asked the overarching research question, how might we design a digital employment tool to support underrepresented job seekers' three TPB cognitive factors? More specifically, we tackled the overarching research question by answering two sub-questions. First, what are the two tools' effects on underrepresented job seekers' three TPV factors? And second, what are the design recommendations for an employment tool to support these positive effects if we find any? 
So this diagram illustrates how we adapted the TPP model to our study context. We designed a longitudinal field deployment to answer our research question. First, participants signed up for our study and were randomly assigned to three groups, Review Me, Interview 4, and the Control Group. We then scheduled pre-treatment sessions and met them in person. In pre-treatment sessions, we deployed survey and conducted interviews to understand their job search progress and assess their TPV, PPV factors. For the two groups that were assigned with Review Me and Interview 4, we offered tutorial to help them learn how to use the tools. After the pre-treatment sessions, we asked participants to keep a one-month diary to track their job search progress and document how they use the tools. We also had weekly calls to follow up with them about their job search progress. After four weeks, we scheduled post-treatment sessions with participants. In the post-treatment sessions, we again used survey and interviews to understand their job search progress, the role of the assigned tools, and assess their TPV factors. We recruited job seekers from Southeast Michigan. This area had an average poverty rate of 14% and had an unemployment rate of 4.9%. The unemployment rate was higher than the national unemployment rate of the United States and was even higher among our underrepresented job seekers. We employed three sampling strategies, which are described in detail in our paper. However, we had a high attrition rate that was over 80%, which we also discuss why this happened and how we addressed these issues in our paper. After an eight-month time window, 23 job seekers finished the study and we achieved a gender balance. The average age was about 49 years old, and the average annual household income was $18,000. More than half of our participants reported themselves as Black or African American. We conducted both a qualitative and quantitative analysis on the data. For example, quantitative analysis, uh, for quantitative analysis, we were not able to conduct complicated analysis because of our small sample size. So we only report the descriptive statistics in our paper. In the paper, we reported how the two tools and the study influenced job seekers' three TPV factors. But in this presentation, I will only describe two findings, the findings regarding self-efficacy and the aspects that the theory TPV did not capture. Now, let's see how the, tools, uh, the two tools influenced participants' self-efficacy first. From the survey data, we found that both Review Me and Interview 4 group had improved self-efficacy more than the control group. We then looked into the interview data to understand why this happened. We found that the key was the feedback mechanism, but the two tools worked in different ways. Review Me allowed job seekers to receive external feedback from online reviewers, while Interview 4 allowed job seekers to receive internal feedback by reviewing themselves. In the case of Review Me, participants received external feedback from online volunteers. All of our participants mentioned receiving positive feedback from reviewers, and this benefited their self-efficacy. For example, reviewers provided rating on aspects such as job seekers' experience and the resume's clarity. A participant who was a 30-year-old woman described how the positive ratings affected her uh, self-efficacy. She said, Review Me certainly helps me feel a bit more confident to see the ratings I got, lowest being 4 out of 5, where 5 is the most positive. I was not expecting that, to be honest. I was expecting 1 star all the way down the board. The participant received positive ratings from uh, online reviewers, which was out of her expectation and these positive ratings contributed to her self-efficacy. Different from Review Me, Interview 4 allowed job seekers to provide feedback to themselves. By reviewing their practice videos, our participants developed two meta-skills, self-reflection and self-assessment, 
which help them to uh, improve their self-efficacy in their interview skills. For example, a participant who was a woman in her 40s, she said, the research for the interview helped me to be more confident in interviewing because I realized when I watched the videos that I needed to have more eye contact and just relax a little bit. So interview for Kaido helped me to gain confidence but also just focus more on what I need to do to successfully have a good interview in the future. These results suggest that to improve on the representative job seeker's self-efficacy, providing external or internal feedback would be helpful. Now let's see the second finding, which is the aspects that TPP did not capture. From the survey data, we found that review me participants had a 17% negative change in their intention and behavior, which was quite large. That means review me participants did not carry out job search behavior as they intended to do. From the interview data, we found that five of the six review me participants they reflected about their long-term career goals and decided to pursue other career paths, such as starting their own businesses or going back to school. Today's job market requires job seekers to adapt fast, but the TPB did not account for such a dynamic context. Based on our findings, we recommend future tools to incorporate features supporting positive feedback and self-reflection to foster underrepresented job seekers' self-efficacy. First, we recommend uh, tools to frame external feedback as social support and highlight job seekers' accomplishments. This positive feedback could not only increase uh, this job seeker's self-efficacy, but also increase their subjective norms. While I did not mention in this presentation, participants say their subjective norms were in, uh, increased because their perceived social isolation were mitigated. Second, an employment tool should provide technical features to help job seekers reflect their job search progress. For example, a tool can aggregate a job seeker's application history to highlight their progress. A tool can also provide prompts to inspire job seekers to reflect about their job search strategies and even their career goals. In terms of search, uh, research implications, we call for research to extend the TPB for the modern employment context. TPB is widely used to model job search. However, the current job search uh, job market changes very fast. Job seekers might need to pursue short-term goals other than focusing on job hunting before they can really get a job. Future work should look into opportunities to extend a TPV model to better take account for job seekers' fast adaptation. To summarize, our study makes the following contributions to the domain. First, we found that positive feedback and self-reflection are the key features to foster underrepresented job seekers' self-efficacy. We contribute design implementations to address these population's needs. Second, we provide reflections on methodological challenges and contributing ways to improve research conducted with disadvantaged populations. These ways include the research recommendation on extending the TVB and also strategies to manage participant attrition when working with underrepresented populations. Lastly, our employment research has been dominated by quantitative data. Our study contributes qualitative data to further enrich our knowledge regarding unemployment and job search. Now, this slide is my last slide, and it presents the key takeaways of our study. Through a one-month field deployment study, we tested how two digital employment tools affect underrepresented job seekers. Our work contributes design and research implications to unemployment research. We wish to thank several individuals and groups, thank the National Science Foundation for funding this project. We want to thank our participants and our community partners, thank UMSI members and our group members for feedback on the project. And lastly, we want to thank those who helped to execute this study. This is the end of my presentation. You can find our paper by scanning the QR code on the screen or visiting our group website to find the paper. Also, feel free to contact us if you have any questions or comments. Thank you and have a good day.